Hello guys, welcome back to Isiman Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily Isiman Engineering videos. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss the types of the joints that are used in the construction of the rigid pavement. So there are two types of the joints used in the construction of rigid pavement. One is called the longitudinal joint and one is called the transverse joint. Let's consider that this is the rigid pavement in which the traffic moves in both the direction. In one way, the traffic moves in the one direction, while on the other side, the traffic moves on the other, in the other direction. And this is the center line of the road. So this is in a rigid pavement, and this is the longitudinal view of the rigid pavement. If you look into the cross section of the rigid pavement, so this is A A section, so we will see this cross section of the rigid pavement, which is A A section. So we can see the different layers in the rigid pavement, the subgrid layer, the sub-base layer, and the base course layer. These are the three important layers that are placed in the construction of the rigid pavement. And on the top of base course, there is a concrete slab placed on the top of these layers. And this is known as the concrete slab. And in the concrete slab, we use two different types of the joints. So if we look into the 3D dimension of this concrete slab, 3D view, let's suppose this is the 3D view of the slab. This is the pavement and these are the three layers below the concrete slab. So the traffic moves on the top of this concrete slab and this is again the center line. Like here we see the center line. So this is the longitudinal view of the rigid pavement while this is the cross section of this longitudinal view. So we can see here that on the top of concrete slab the traffic will move in both the direction. Now where we use the joints in the rigid pavement. The one joint is used along, along the longitudinal direction of the pavement. So this joint is known as the longitudinal joint. And here in the longitudinal view, we will see the joint here in the center line. So this joint is known as the longitudinal joint because it is provided along the longitudinal direction of the rigid pavement. This joint is known as the longitudinal joint. And the main purpose of the joint is to avoid the thermal stresses because during the temperature change there will be variation in the concrete slab. So to avoid this variation in the concrete slab we provide the joints. In the summer the concrete slab will try to expand. So by the longitudinal joint it will help to avoid the expansion in the concrete slab. Similarly, in the winter, the concrete will try to contract, while these joints will help in order to resist the contraction during the winter season. So this is the longitudinal joint provided along the longitudinal direction of the pavement. While the other type of the joint is provided in the perpendicular direction to that of the longitudinal joint. So this joint is known as the transverse joint. This joint we see here is provided in the perpendicular direction to that of the longitudinal joint. So this joint is known as the transverse joint because it is provided transversely to the longitudinal joint. That's why it's called as the transverse joint. So this is known as the transverse joint, transverse joint, while this is known as the which is provided along the longitudinal direction is known as the longitudinal joint. So these are the two types of the joint provided in the concrete slab or we can say in the rigid pavement in order to resist the thermal stresses. During the temperature change the stresses will create inside the concrete slab and these joint will help to resist these thermal stresses. So the main purpose of these joints is to avoid the formation of the thermal stresses inside the rigid pavement. Hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe our channel for DD7 engineering videos. Thank you for watching our video.